Robin Bremer is a best-selling author, a publishing coach, and a business developer. She has written over 50 books and published and promoted many other authors' books to the bestseller's status. She got her start by paying almost $2,000 to publish her first book. She also had to pay $12 a book and buy a box of books. This is the same story of many other authors who just paid too much. After publishing her own books for years, her passion is to help other authors be successful in writing, publishing, and promoting without emptying their wallet or purse. She does this through her podcast called Self-Publishing Bestseller, Hints, Tips, and Interviews. To learn more or to start the publishing process of your own book, go to www.robinbremer.net. That's R-O-B-I-N-B-R-E-M-E-R dot net. Welcome to It's Supernatural with Robin Show, where we share personal experiences and scriptures on how you can walk in the supernatural. The show is mixed with off-grid living, toxic-free lifestyle, and a touch of politics. Join our host today for today's podcast, and remember, it's natural to be supernatural. Today, I just wanted to go over pretty quick uh, some really cool revelations that God has given me about the spirit of fear or about fear. And these things have really helped me when I wanted to get into fear, which seems to be such an easy thing to do nowadays. He basically showed me several things. And the first thing is fear is always based on an expectation of bad things. So whenever you get into fear, you're expecting something bad. Okay, now there's three places that that comes from, and this is what really helped me. First of all, when he said that when you fear, it's because you're expecting something bad to happen. That helped a lot. But he also said that there's three main sources that your expectation of fear comes from. And number one is you had a bad memory of the a related event number two is you have a someone else's memory of a bad event in other words you saw it on TV heard it on the news or somebody told you so your own memory of a bad event that you relate in your mind is similar the other thing is someone else's memory of uh, a, a similar experience and then the third thing is your imagination of that event and what he showed me that was really helpful is whenever you have a fear, what you're doing is you're revisiting that fear. And when, what I mean by revisiting is um, you, for example, if you're afraid to go to the dentist um, because you went to the dentist once and it hurt and all the smells and the sounds and so you got a fear of going to the dentist. So every time you go to the dentist you get fearful what you're doing is you're basing this trip to the dentist on last trips so you're revisiting your memory of a bad event so there's one way that God said to deal with this is first of all he said take whatever it is you're stressing out worried or fearful about and decide where does that fear come from is it because I'm thinking of an event that was similar to this and I'm afraid the same thing's going to happen. So figure out what it is that you're thinking about. Are you thinking about your own memory of something that happened to you in the past? Number two, are you thinking about a memory that somebody else told you about or you're using your imagination and thinking the worst? Once you figure that out, then he said when you think about that event, you're actually revisiting it and you're opening the door to experience that again so don't revisit it don't go in your mind and see yourself in the dentist chair and remember the sounds and the smells and the pain that you felt because revisiting it opens the door for you to do it again so don't revisit it he said create good memories so if you have a bad memory of going to the dentist go to the dentist and create a good memory if it's at all possible go to the dentist and create a good memory ask God what that means um, so uh, you want to then the following time you go to the dentist you won't be afraid because you will be focusing on and revisiting your good memory so I thought that was really an interesting thing because you see when 
when you want to visit the throne of heaven, the way that you do that is with your imagination. And you can look in the Bible and see what the throne of heaven looks like. Then you can close your eyes and imagine the throne of heaven. And you can go there. Okay. And then whatever experiences you have there, or if you go to the court of heaven and you have experiences there, in order to go to the court of heaven again, you remember or revisit those memories and you will be there. So the way to pull yourself into an experience is to remember that or recall that experience. That's why it's so important to journal. Um, journal is good for fear because it lets you go back and look at your thoughts and think what you are looking at. And there's Dr. Caroline Leaf. If you want to check out her information about fear, it's very good. But you can revisit heaven or wherever when you go back in your mind. Like if you say, if I say to you, how many doors do you have in your house? Well, you revisit your house. You go in your house in your mind and you go from room to room and you count the doors. That's revisiting. Well, when we get into fear, what God said to me is what you're doing is you're revisiting a toxic memory a past history of yourself or someone else so don't do that so when the thought comes up oh I gotta go to the dentist today I don't want to it's gonna smell terrible it's gonna feel terrible it's gonna hurt I don't want to go say no right here right now I'm in my car it's a beautiful day I'm present right now so the other trick besides not revisiting that bad memory or that bad memory someone else gave you or your imagination of what you think it'll be like. He said to stop the thought right there and say, no, I'm being present where I am right now. What's happening right this second, what I'm feeling and what experiencing right this second, be present at the second because fear is thinking of the future. Fear is thinking of the possibility of the future, but with negative expectations. So you don't want to do that. So think of what it is you're fearing. Where is it coming from? What memory? Stop visiting that memory. Think about your present thing and create, if you can, next time you go, a good memory of that event so that you have a good memory to recall or to go back to, to revisit. So, um, the, and the root of all stress is fear. Every stress, every worry is fear. And oftentimes it's a lack of control. But you can control your fear because if you stay present where you are right now, what's happening right now, the air that you're feeling on your arms, uh, if you have the car windows open, the air you're feeling on your face, um, it's a sunshiny day, the clouds look pretty, you're with your spouse or your kids. If you're present now, you're not going to... Um, project or revisit the future that you think is going to be bad and cause stress because sometimes the stress that you feel about an event or a situation is worse than the actual event because what you're doing is you're using a negative imagination a toxic memory or something you heard on TV on the news from a friend my friend died of this and they had this symptom so you could have it too you better go to the doctor so what you're doing is you're projecting fear into that person it's better to leave that person alone and to pray for them and when you pray for them don't say oh father heal them of cancer they're thinking oh my god do my symptoms have cancer or is she prophetic does she know I have cancer I don't know I have cancer so be careful when you pray for people and make sure uh, that they don't think that you're saying they have that and they're getting into fear about that so remember it almost as far as I know from what God told me all fear is based on memory toxic memory wrong memory and the more you think about it the more you re revisit it the bigger the stress will happen and and until it's over and you'll find out um, they interviewed people that are like 80 years and older and they said or I don't know how like 80 90 100 whatever and they said that almost all of them said that 80% of the things that they feared in life did not happen and and so <clears throat> what we're doing is we're remembering we're thinking like if I if I said to you something like um okay today we're gonna go to visit um, the Globetrotters and you never heard of the Globetrotters you wouldn't have no fear because you don't know what the Globetrotters are the Globetrotters are an awesome basketball team that do tricks but if I said we're gonna go visit the Globetrotters 
you wouldn't all of a sudden get in fear because you think that it, the globe trotters are a, a new shot you're going to get, you know, a needle in your arm or a teeth that's going to get pulled or, or they're going to make you strip naked and take pictures, x-rays of you or something. You have no idea what that means, so you can't project into it fear. So the reason that fear comes about is because of your expectation of bad things happening from you and you only have an expectation if you heard something from someone or experienced something. So it's a toxic memory that we have to get rid of. It's the, and the way that we do that is we choose to take captive our thoughts. That's why it's so important to take captive your thoughts. Nope, I'm not going there. I'm riding in the car right now. I'm, in, I'm gonna enjoy my ride in the car. I'm not sitting in the dentist chair right now. He's not drilling on me right now. He's not pulling my teeth right now. So I'm not gonna get in fear. I'm right here in my car right now. And even when you get into the dentist chair and the doctor comes in the room and you get a little bit nervous. Nope, nope, I'm not getting nervous. And then when he starts pulling your tooth and it starts hurting, he'll be over within a couple of seconds. Don't use that toxic memory for next time. Create a good memory, okay? Think and revisit it, heaven. Revisit it, good things, you know? Um, so that's all I wanted to share. Uh, fear is always faced on something in your past, an event Sometimes you have to go to court of heaven about fear. Um, I was dealing with a fear and I couldn't figure out what is the problem. I mean, I went to the court of heaven. I repented of every list that I could find in every book. And God doesn't think like us. He's a little bit slower. He, he peels the onions off in layers. And over the process of time, a layer would come off. Oh, this is what you're dealing with. Oh, this is the memory. Oh, this is a courts of heaven. Oh, this is what your ancestors did. Oh, this is, you know, and he peels it off layer by layer. So be persistent. The Holy Spirit wants you to succeed. The Holy Spirit is here to guide you, to make you victorious, to manifest Jesus in you. So trust him. Keep telling him. Keep asking him. Show me what the problem is. Show me what the solution is. Show me what I need to do to correct this. And trust him that he will correct it. So, um... Fear is based on toxic memory. And oftentimes those memories, you don't even remember them. They go all the way back to childhood. That's why it's so important what you say to children. Since I have learned this about uh, um, what you say to a child can affect them the rest of their life. Even if you didn't mean it, even if it did not, not come out as you expected, it can change somebody's life. I remember one thing somebody said to me, not as a child, but as an adult, somebody says, I, when I went from no glasses to glasses, he goes, wow, you look great in glasses. Most people don't look good in glasses, but you look great. Well, I, all these years is like, wow, I look great in glasses. Okay. Now, recently I was just going to switch, thinking of switching to contacts. And I thought, well, I probably don't look as good in contacts as I do with glasses because I have a long face and it kind of breaks it up. And, and, I, and I remember what this guy said wow, you look really good in glasses. Most people don't, but you do. So in my mind, I was thinking, well, he must think I look ugly without glasses, but with glasses, I look better. So it's like, maybe I don't want to go without glasses. I don't look as good as I do with glasses. And so that stuck with me and I had to realize, hey, you know, what I think he said didn't really have anything to do with reality because how I see myself matters more than how someone else sees me. So you just got to realize you got to sometimes some of these, the fears and phobias that no matter what you do, they can't come off. You go to the courts of heaven. It takes time to peel off the layers because sometimes a lot of it goes back to your childhood and something innocent maybe that you experienced and it just allowed the spirit to attach to you and bring its friends with you and grow. And the more you re revisited that fear, the bigger it got. Um, and the more problems you have with it. So you want to deal with it. You want to get those layers off. You just want to, uh, you just want to go for it and get rid of it. If you're afraid of like driving the car, you just need to find out why and deal with it and, and begin to realize when you drive in a car, there's no reason to be afraid or whatever. Thank you for joining us for today's podcast. If it was a blessing to you, please consider financially supporting us by clicking on the sponsor this podcast button. Any links mentioned in this podcast will be listed below along with any affiliate products, services, or partner websites. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your social media site and remember, it is natural to be supernatural.